So continuing the development of my Chipping Spiro painting. <clears throat> um, in the video yesterday that got lost, I, I was talking about the, the catch light in the eye. I've worked on the, on the face quite a bit, and uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I worked on was, was the eye, but I didn't do anything about the catch light. It's a little bit big and a little bit bright, and I was saying in my my uh, discussion yesterday that um, eyeballs are essentially mirrors <clears throat> so um, frequently they if you if you can if you have the opportunity to, to really inspect close up a photo of an animal's eye you'll see A reflection of the, the world around the, the animal in the eye, or at least a <clears throat> um, a very simplified version of it. It's it's usually not all that recognizable, but but especially the colors are are um, reflected in the in the eye. So I just dropped a little bit of ultramarine blue into into the eye. I've left a little bit of the of the white of the paper, but there's much less of it now and I like that a lot better. Another thing that often works quite nicely is to drop a little bit of, of burnt umber into the eye, especially if you have a fairly large eye, to, to do both blue and burnt umber uh, works quite nicely, but this is a small eye tiny catch light and I think that what I just did is a big improvement it makes the the catch light a little less obvious and uh, a little more colorful so I think that's that's good <clears throat> all right so uh, I'm gonna go back to to developing the, the plumage on the wings I, I did most of this yesterday um, but there's more to be done Change my glasses. I've got my bifocals on. Put my reading my computer glasses on instead. <coughs> All right, that's better. So now um, I'm going to go into the dark passages. This brush is a little too big. I'm going to go into the dark passages of, uh, of the feathers uh, on the shoulder and wings. Where's my double eye? Let me see it. That's it, the one that went, wants to split on me. I don't like that. I've got a triple out, which is a little small. I don't. Oh, there it is, right there. <coughs> Much better. This is my double out. So, dropped a fairly high value. Pull into this feather. I'm going to distribute it a little more uniformly and carefully. So this is a good time. I, I mentioned yesterday too in the, in the disappearing reel about um, a specialized brush that I have that I intended to use when I got to to um, finalizing the, the plumage on the on the wing. So this is a good time to pull that out. Make a little room for it here. Really don't need all of these. So the, the specialized brush 
is a rake. I have several of them. I think this is all of them. <coughs> so a rake is essentially a flat, but the the bristles are are cut away so that there are gaps in them. And I've got this one which is a quarter inch, this one which is a three-eighth inch filbert, and this one which is a number four. And uh, this is actually called a super shader, but uh, and this one's called a grainer, and this one is called a filbert grainer, but um, they're also known as rakes, and the reason they're called rakes is fairly obvious. They have uh, kind of a serrated edge to them. <clears throat> These are really good for um, doing um, fairly limited areas of, of hair or plumage. And where it'll come in handy here is to um, to define the kind of ragged edges of the of the feathers that are laying on top of so essentially we're seeing the the bottom feather through the through the kind of broken edge of the of the top feathers. <coughs> Obviously this could be done with a very small brush, one tiny stroke at a time, but using a brush like this makes the the effect more uniform and it's a lot quicker. This this number four is by far my favorite. The, my, my next favorite is the is the largest one, the filbert, which I put away. This one here, the, the three eighth inch filbert, the one that's my least favorite is the quarter inch flat and the reason is that um, it's it's hard to do this directionally um, and the larger the brush is the the harder it becomes so either using a small flat brush like the one I'm using or using the, the rounded tip of the filbert makes it a lot easier to to get the directionality correct. I'm uh, being pretty conservative about this. It's, it's easy to overdo this. It's a lot like a lot of techniques. If, you, if a little bit is, is great, a lot becomes gimmicky. And it's hard to know exactly where the line is. So it's better to be conservative. You can always add more, but um, it can be a little difficult to to undo too much. Although it's not impossible. Um, Alright, that's looking pretty good. Um, right here on these the white edges of these feathers, those are also kind of broken up. <clears throat> okay, I've a little bit in here. A 
another place this is going to come in really handy is in the the throat and the belly because there's there's a lot of really subtle textural stuff going on in there this could work kind of nicely here too All right, I think I'm flirting with the gimmicky end of things, so I'm going to stop there. And I think I will lift a little bit of this, push it back a little bit. That's good. All right, back to my 2 watt. And what I was doing with the the wing feathers here. <clears throat> it would be nice if you could see my reference photo while I was doing this so you could have a better sense of what I was trying to accomplish but I'll just have to try to describe as I go. So on this particular feather there's um, it's probably the line of the quill I can't actually see the quill in my photograph, but there is <coughs> definitely a, a line below which it's darker and above which it's a little bit lighter. Same thing here, there's, there's a line which I've already got painted in, sort of. I'm going to pull a little bit of that down, but I will first come down and paint this in. This has got much the same thing going on. <coughs> right, I'm going to look from this quite wet line here. Um, Alternately, uh, drying out the brush to, to create a thirsty brush and then lifting. I'm going to go, go in with a little bit of water now along this bottom edge. It's a little too strong. And now I can lift that out. This is being a two watt brush. It's doesn't lift all that much, but that's kind of a good thing because it makes a, a subtle effect and it's a fairly small area, so it's actually a pretty good sized brush for the job. All right, here in this the third feather, this dark passage actually goes back and meets the white edges of the feathers above it. It's not quite that dark, but again, I can rinse my brush, drop a little bit of water in here, clean the water off with my paper towel, and push this edge back, soften it up a little bit. There, I like that. And this next one down, the darkest passage is right where it meets the feather above it. And it gets nice and narrow towards the head of the bird. So I do this quite a lot. Um, if, I, if I've wet a passage that's got 
a well-defined edge to it. I can float either water or paint into that area. And I know that it will be dispersed and it won't run away from me and get into places that I don't want it to be. It's a really useful technique and uh, it's another one of those techniques that really only works in watercolors and no other medium. It's looking pretty good. So now I can move down and start doing the same sort of treatment. For the next row of feathers. As I'm doing this, I'm making refinements and adjustments to, to what I did previously in terms of shape and size of different passages. <coughs> it's looking pretty good. I think the these feathers here, those are secondaries, I believe, they... Um, they could be a little darker now because I've darkened up the feathers on the near side, making the feathers on the far side look a little light in comparison. It looks pretty good. I think the tail is more or less okay. It could be a little darker in a few places. Good. So now this area in here is looking quite light and this area here is also looking light but it's mostly because it needs to be a richer brown. In fact this whole passage right here could, with the exception of a couple of highlights, the, the more or less white edges of those two feathers, that whole area could be a richer brown closer to the, to the chestnut of the of the bird's crown 
So I, I need to, well, I can do part of it right now, I suppose. <clears throat> so I'm going to use straight burnt sienna for this. Burnt sienna is a little on the opaque side, so it's, um, it tends to obscure fine details that it that you paint over it and of course there's always a possibility if you overwork an area that you'll undo some of the, the painting painting that you did previously so you want to be a little on the conservative side pretty good except I don't like the hard edge on the on the upper side of that so I'm gonna come in with some sort of clear water on this edge <coughs> and then I'm gonna hoover some of that up with my dry brush and that makes a nice soft transition and I think I can float a little bit stronger color in in a couple of places right along this edge could use a little more color and this bottom edge here good like it <coughs> next group of feathers here also needs to be a little darker but it, I need to preserve the, the white edges so I'm gonna have to go back in with with my rigor and I need to let what I just did dry first and I also need to go back in and and uh, warm this area up here I haven't done that yet but uh, that'll have to wait also in the meantime I can come down and I can be working on the on the belly and I, I haven't even started to develop the the feet and legs of the bird and I got plenty to do on the on the perch so I got lots I can do while I'm letting that dry. My catch light in the eye has really done some nice things as it dried. It's um it's pulled a little bit of the, the neutral tint into it so it's it's got kind of a nuanced shading to it that I really like. Um, you can't see it probably from there, but I'll, I'll try to remember to zoom in on it as I end this video. Um, pretty much everything else is looking good. So I'm, I think I'm going to work on the throat actually, since I'm talking about that. Um, <clears throat> so that was uh, Payne's Gray or Neutral Tint. I, I used both. I think I'm going to use, I think I'm going to go with the, the Windsor Newton Payne's Gray. Um, this is Windsor Newton Payne's Gray. This is Da Vinci Payne's Gray. And they have the same name, but they're not the same color at all. The, the, um, the Da Vinci is a fairly neutral gray, and the, the Windsor Newton is quite a blue gray. And here, I think the, the bluish cast of the, of the Windsor Newton is going to, Gonna work quite nicely. So I've I've picked up my my uh, rake. I'm gonna touch the, the tape just to unload it a little bit, and I'm gonna suggest some some layering on the throat. This is a little dark. But not to worry, I can lighten it up with no problem, and I will, but I'm going to try to do everything I'm going to do with this brush first. Okay, 
actually be a little darker. <coughs> and over here, being very careful to stay out of my wet paint. All right, now that's all a little dark, so I'm going to lightly dab, and I'm trying to just go straight down and straight back up so that I leave the, the brushwork that I did intact, but I, I lighten the value. That pushes it back quite nicely. I can go in with my, I'm going to use my 2 watt again. And I'm going to go to the clean side of my, my water. I can go in here on the bottom side and I can wet that bottom edge and kind of pull some of the some of the um, pigment from the the, the rake strokes ties them together um, and it creates a nice subtle continuity to the line. Yeah, I like that. So right here there's a darker value. actually goes all the way back to here. And up here, this is actually pretty dark. This is much too dark, but what I'm doing right now, maybe you can see the blue cast though because it is so dark. <clears throat> it really is quite blue. So now I'm, I'm flooding it with sort of clear water. I'm not worried about really about using really clean water because I'm working with a gray after all. But uh, I want to Keep that fluid and workable, <coughs> and now I can go back and lift with the same brush. And create some subtle value shifts in here. Keeping the bottom edge a little darker than everywhere else. That's good, except that the this ring right here around the eye is now looking quite light by comparison. But I, I can darken that up, but I, I need to let what I just did dry a little bit so that I don't don't lose control of it. <clears throat> In the meantime, this is a little darker than what I've got it painted as. A lot of subtle stuff going on. This guy's cheek and throat around his eye. Actually, a little bit of a shadow line right here. I like 
the shape of this here is actually this is the edge of the shadow being cast by the, the bird's bill on its throat and it kind of wraps around to the to the side of the bird that's facing us and, and peters away as it blends into the general shadow on that side. That's more like it. One like the other. <coughs> All right. Down here in the area of the bird's bent, there's a little bit of a shadow right about here. That actually defines the plumage of probably the bird's thigh. a bit of a shadow where the bird's leg disappears into the into its plumage and there's a shadow behind it there's a line that kind of Follows that. <coughs> this area that I saved is the white of paper is really actually darker than everything else around it. <coughs> Fortunately, it can always go darker, no problem. Can be difficult when you're starting out with a painting where everything is is just the white of the paper and you got a few lines to, to guide you for the the major elements in the in the shape of the bird that you know the, the main feathers and the main groups of feathers and and the facial features but there's an awful lot that just is kind of in the middle of space and uh, it's it's hard to um, to really to get that right right from the start. So um, as the painting develops, you have a lot more reference points to um, to use to locate those both both the location and the size of them and the and the value of them. Um, so it becomes much easier as as the painting develops to to um, add in a lot of the subtle details, but um, you're also sort of drawing with your paint, and um, it's, if you get it wrong, you can make a, make a mess of things pretty quick, and it can be hard to recover from that, so it's um, really good, once again, to be conservative, and leave yourself an out, make sure that you, you're going to be able to undo or at least modify some of the decisions that you're making, some of the elements that you're painting in. A bunch of subtle stuff going on on the bird's breast and I've, I've really got <clears throat> these two things 
a little overstated. So this is a good time to go back to something that I demonstrated in the episode that disappeared into cyberspace. Um, I have, here they are, I have these three brushes here. These are these are my favorite sizes. I have a whole bunch of other ones here too that I seldom use, but uh, but it's handy to have them in a whole bunch of different sizes. Because you never know exactly how much you're going to have to do what I'm about to do with this. So these are these are scrubber brushes, and uh, they're they're purpose made. They say right on them, scrubber. If you can see that, um, these are sold by Jerry's Artorama. Um, I'm sure that there are other manufacturers out there, but this is a, a, a store brand of, of theirs, and they work great. I really like them a lot. I use them all the time. Um, <clears throat> as I say, these are the three sizes that I use the most. This is a number six, this is a number four, and this is a number two. And um, what they are, these are all filbert shaped, and they're very stiff nylon bristles so they're perfect for lifting out or um, or lightening elements so what I'm going to do here I, I demonstrated this area here was a little dark much like that there um, and I, I scrubbed it out and lightened it and brought it more in line value wise with what's on the other side of the, the bird's leg I, I can do the same thing here in fact I, I'll go ahead and do that and this this passage right here this is I, um, I, I mounted my paper dry, just using painter's tape, and then I, I masked off the bird and the, and the perch with uh, Pabillo drawing gum, another thing that I mentioned in my missing episode. Um, <coughs> I, I masked it off, painting it very carefully with the, with the Pabillo um, masking fluid, and let it dry and then I, I by doing that I was able to paint the, the whole background without having to worry about um, cutting around the, the, the foreground subject um, which allows me to make a much more uniform treatment to the background with a few exceptions because I, it was a mounted dry um, the once I started working really wet which I did in the background that, that was very wet um, I, I was taking advantage of, of the wetness to, to throw in some, some coarse salt to get the textural effects and, and uh, using the, the wetness to blend my colors um, nicely with no hard edges except for where I wanted them. Um, but the downside is that because it, it, was, um, it was just taped down dry, uh, once, it was, once it was saturated, the paper expanded was taped on the edges it had no place to go so it went up um, so it developed uh, hills and valleys and uh, the paint flowed off the hills and collected in the valleys so I've got these these vertical uh, sort of curving um, passages that I didn't intend which you know sometimes that's okay but um, but in this case I, I would have preferred that that it was more uniform um, where the paint collected um, as it flowed off the the, the hilltops. Um, so I'm gonna I'll start over here. Um, this one really bugs me a little bit. I like the blue, but I don't I don't like the strength of it. Or maybe that's violet. I don't know. Um, I like to use violet in my background washes because it suggests distance. Um, Cool colors recede, warm colors advance, and because it, this is a background, I was trying to, to suggest a little bit of separation between my foreground subject and my the background, so I, um, I think I probably used some Da Vinci Violet in this, and that may, may well be what, what this is. <clears throat> so I just wet that with clear water. I'm also going to wet this area here, which was what I started out talking about. And I think I'll wet this here too, because I don't like these hard edges. 
I'm going to leave the, this one alone. I don't necessarily object to that. I'm not sure that I like it, but I can always change my mind. So now I'm going to just let the clear water do its thing and uh, reactivate the paint. This is already getting activated. Um, so now I'm going to wet my scrubber. I'm using the number six because I'm working on a fairly large area. And I'm just kind of scrubbing back and forth. I, I'm being pretty gentle. I don't want to molest the surface of the paper and damage it. I just want to scrub it enough so that it loosens the, the paint from the paper. And now I'm blotting that up. That's much better. And if I want, I can go back in with my scrubber and I can move the paint that's still on the paper back into the that little bit of a void that I created. And I can move it around, go, go back and forth. Generally blend it in with the surroundings. You can see it is picking up little flecks of paper, and that's that's actually damaging the paper. So that's why you need to be fairly careful with, with these. You don't want to go overboard. And they're called scrubbers. I don't really scrub with them. I do use them to gently convince the paint that it wants to be elsewhere. And instead of using my paper towel, which is kind of a blunt instrument, I'm going to go in with a, a clean, fairly large brush. This is my number six, and I've just squeezed it out. I, I rinsed it first and squeezed it out. Now I'm, I'm using it to mop up some of the, the pigment and the water. pretty good and I can use this as a scrubber too it's obviously a much more subtle effect because the bristles are so much softer but it does a nice job of blending things I like that much better I'm gonna go over here and see what I can do with this brush The nice thing about using a sable brush for this, it, it doesn't, it's not nearly as effective, but it's it's also much better at at creating a <coughs> an effect that kind of disappears into the background. It melts into the background, whereas a scrubber tends to leave sort of hard edges where you scrubbed it. So, generally speaking, I think that's a big improvement. So now my, um, this area here looks like it's fine. It's starting to bleed out into the white of the paper, which doesn't bother me that much. I think I'm going to switch to my number four, <coughs> slightly smaller brush. And again, I'm wetting the brush. I really have plenty of water on the paper, so I don't necessarily need to, to wet it, but, um, but it doesn't hurt to wet it, and um, it's... Uh, Good insurance if the, there's not enough water on the paper. So all I'm doing here is kind of scrubbing the edges mostly. I want to I want to leave the passages, but I want to soften the edges. That's looking much better. I'm going to go back to my sable brush. It's this is bled out quite a bit, but once I lift, it mostly picks up the, the area that bled, bled away from the original passage and leaves m most of the white of the paper. I'm going to now use my paper towel. I've lifted most of what I, what I wanted to lift. I need to be careful of what I did up in, on, the, on the throat. That looks great. I like that much better. And then I'll come down and do the same thing here. I'm going to leave the hard edge on the top because that, that actually works quite nicely. But I'm going to work on the, the hard edge along the, the, 
the edge closest to the breast. And I think I'll work on this edge here a little bit too. Soften that. Now I'm just going to go right in with my paper towel here because this is kind of a, an amorphous shape, fairly large. There's, I'm not likely to get into trouble with it. And that too is much better. Um, that little effect is a lot um, more subtle, so it'll I'll be able to to uh, blend the the new work in with that quite nicely. So my uh, computer monitor just went dark on me. I think that's a sign. I need to stop this video. I've done quite a lot. I I think uh, this is good progress. Um, so I'm going to set this aside to let it dry and end this video and pick it up where I left off next time. Thanks for watching. So I, I said I would show you the, the, a close-up of the eye. Hopefully you can see that. And pull back on the the entire painting so you can see a little better what I've done. Alright, that's it. Thank you.